Hello and welcome to Postcard and the Pines. I'm Rachel. And I'm Will. And today we're in Barcelona. Barcelona. It's the second of our In A Day series. In a day, you say? Everyone does that. Ah, but not everyone does it. Starting and ending in the UK. After the success of the first one of these, we've got a bit cocky and come further afield. Well, to be honest, after the weather in Amsterdam, we just wanted some sun. So join us as we goggle at Gaudi, mooch around the markets and get sassy at the Sagrada. And all in a day, starting and ending in the UK. It all started like this. Wakey, wakey, time to get up. She's not great at early mornings. Now it's Easter weekend and the airport's very busy. They advised arriving three hours before. We gave it an hour and a half and we just made it. Ah, you can't beat a sunrise above the clouds. Over the Pyrenees and over the beaches. Well, that was all very straightforward. We've landed, we've just been the loo. The jumpers are off. Let's go. Find a train. Once again, the ticket machines are multi-language and easy to use. You can get into the city by using the L line, which is the metro or underground, or the R line, the above ground. Both have different maps, so don't get confused. Basically, know your R's from your L's. Those we got off the train at Passage de Gracia to see Casa Baio, a house designed by Antonio Gaudi and considered one of his masterpieces. You can tour inside, as in 2005, Casa Baio became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. We've had our first Gaudi fix of the day. Just a little one, we're saving the main event to the end. Loving it, out in your t-shirt. We're heading off to Placa de Catalunya and the top of the Ramblers. Come on! Enjoying the nearest thing we've seen to a summer since 2019, we walk down the street admiring the incredible architecture of Barcelona. Placa de Catalunya is considered to be the city centre and where the old and the new city meet. Pigeons! Some of the city's most important streets and avenues meet at Placa de Catalunya. It's also what we call the top of the Ramblas. Ugh, you can't go anywhere without tripping over a Primark. We're about to go down the Ramblas. Come on. This 1.2 kilometer street has a pretty stinky history. It was originally a sewage filled stream, usually dry, but important for draining heavy rainwater from the hills. Poo. Now it's filled with cafes, gift shops and live statues. Sadly, it's also infamous for pickpockets. Don't worry about us though, I do my Christmas shopping in Liverpool and have perfected a great don't mess with me scouse face over the years. We're going into the famous La Boqueria market. It's looking busy. Let's have a look. La Boqueria is a fantastic market just off La Ramblas. It sells a huge array of products and produce. Our favourites are the fresh fruit and fruit juices. There has been a market on this site since 1836. We love the hustle and bustle and the incredible atmosphere and aromas. On this day, sadly, it was just a bit too busy to stop for tapas. Now there's something I didn't know I needed in my life. A dick waffle. Who knew? Into the Gothic Quarter we went. Ew, that's what too much dick waffle does to you. This was such a cute tapas bar. We've just stopped Hello. for a spot of tapas. Wilting a bit, the early morning's getting me. A little beer, how nice, look at that. It was a tad pricey at two euros 10 per piece of tapas, but I guess we're right in the heart of the city. We loved it. We had a quick mooch around the Gothic Quarter. This area encompasses the oldest parts of the city. We love it here and would definitely pick this area to stay for a city break. Then it was back onto La Ramblas to continue. A litre of sangria for lunch. Go on, my son. A quick mosey off to the Placa Real to admire the square and spot green parrots. We did see them, honest. They're just good at camouflage. Back onto La Ramblas, past caricature artists and human statues. It was 
definitely a Gaudi kind of day. And finally, you end up at the Christopher Columbus Monument. It was constructed for the 1888 Exposition Universal de Barcelona in honour of Columbus's first voyage to the Americas. Oh, we finished rambling down the Ramblas. That was absolutely fantastic. The weather's getting hot. It's got to be at least 24 degrees. May need to whack out the old sun lotion soon. But I think it's time, possibly, for another sit down. Let's go check out the harbour. Now, Wills does love the harbour. I'm not sure why. Probably as he has many a great beer memory here. Anyway, it's a lovely area to sit and people watch. Or you can wave at yourself in this building like these idiots. All in all, it's a very pleasant place. The, loo, the shopping centre is a good place to come. Excellent toilets. And I know my toilets. There's also a cracking view from the observation deck of all the millionaire yachts and cruise ships. Time was marching on and it was time to continue with our day. Oh no, we'd almost made it back when we got stuck as they needed to open the bridge to let some boats out. Cool time lapse. Hooray, we're back on our way. Don't mind them, they're armless. We walked right around the old marina enjoying the weather that was now hot. There's a small fair for kids, more bars and cafes, and yet more markets. The Spanish do like a market. to be a medieval market, but bar this wooden ferris wheel, it was really just an excuse for yet another market. Ah, the smell of those sausages, mmm. After a quick nosy at yachts we could never afford, we arrived at the beach. There was a real feel-good party atmosphere in the air, with live music playing and the smell of fresh seafood cooking. We've made it to the beach, and I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit busy for me. I don't like the beaches this busy, but what is amazing is this is the first European beach we've been on since before the pandemic. 2019 was the last time, and it just feels amazing to be back. And thank you, Will. This is today's trip is courtesy of Will's as part of a my present for my birthday because it was my birthday a few weeks ago so thank you so much i'm so happy it was lovely just to spend 15 minutes sat on the beach in the sun and to remember what holidays felt like amazing these guys were great <laughs> Then across the road to the Port Cable Car, or Port Vale Aerial Tramway as it's called, a Barcelona icon. Sadly, there's no pre-booking or fast track, just a line. It said 90 minutes, I think it took us about 60, but we really wanted to do this. Tickets bought, it's 11 euros one way. Our turn, up we go.
This cable car first opened in 1931. It's had a turbulent history and has closed many times. Thankfully, the development of Port Bell, Wills' favourite harbour, saw the renovation of this tramway and it opened again in 2000. The views are simply stunning. Enjoy! Each cabin holds about 12 people. The tramway is 1,303 metres long and the whole journey takes about 7 minutes. It's not one for the faint-hearted though, and those scared of heights. We're now at the Torajama, or James Tower, the halfway point. This has got to be one of the best ways to get a stunning view of Barcelona. We think it's worth the wait time. The cable car deposits you on Montjuzic Hill, where there is also a stunning view of both the port and the city. Our plan had been to walk down to the Olympic Stadium and then get across town to our final destination. Sadly, the wait time for the cable car put the kibosh on this and we hailed a cab instead. Well, we were hoping to make it to the Olympic Stadium. We did so well, we got the cable car, but we just ran out of time. So we hopped in a cab and now on to Gaudi's Biggie. The Sagrada Familia, come on! I've always known it as Gaudi's Unfinished Cathedral. Well, it's actually a basilica. I've had the fortune to visit this masterpiece four times. In the 80s, 90s, early 2000s and now today. And wow, how it's changed. Gaudi was appointed chief architect in 1883. He changed the original plans and gave it his own unique view, Gaudi style. The nativity façade was the first façade to be completed. The façade faces the rising sun, a symbol for the birth of Christ. The tree of life rises above this incredible piece of art. It's amazing. So detailed is his work, it looks like it's just melted there from candle wax. This is one of the most moving portrayals of the nativity I've ever seen. We stepped inside and our breath was simply taken away. Last time we were here, the inside was just a building site. There was nothing really to see. Now it's like the world's most magical tree has grown out of the earth and light of every colour is shining through its branches. As the sun continued to set, the light was constantly changing and evolving. I can only describe this place as magic. On June the 7th, 1926, Gaudi was tragically struck by a tram in Barcelona. He died a few days later and is buried here, in the crypt of his greatest work.
magical, enchanted, mind-blowing. No words can do it justice. Please just come and see it for yourself. When completed, the Sagrada Familia will be the tallest religious building in Europe. Gaudi believed that nothing man-made should ever be higher than God's work. So at 170 metres, it will sit one metre less than Montjuic, Barcelona's highest point. Amazing. Come on. <laughs> I thought we'd got away with it today. <sighs> Our poor Christmas tree is going to wonder what's hit it this year. Time for a well-earned meal, a sit-down, ooh, and a sangria. Oh, and a beer. Birthday lunch. Top birthday lunch. It was the best birthday meal ever. Well, how good was today? Just being oh, back in Spain, back anywhere. It's just been incredible. I know it's only for a day, because we're going to get back for boots tonight. But it's been so good and um, happy birthday by the way. Slightly belated but happy birthday. So then, how's today been? Today has been amazing. Thank you so much for my birthday day out. It's been fantastic. Popped up for this. Um, the best thing, being back in the Spanish sun has been amazing. No, you're sunburned. Spot the bit that she missed with sun cream. Lovely. Um, I think one of my highlights is Sagrada Familia. I first went there when I was 12 and it literally was a building site and we've been there and it was still a building site and to go in today, and it's still not finished, it's still not finished, but to go in today and just see what they've done. I always used to say when we went before, oh Gaudi would hate this, he'd hate this. Today's the first day I've gone in and thought, oh my god, Gaudi would cry if he came in here. It's absolutely beautiful. So that's what I think of today. So what we're going to do now, we are going to, fingers crossed, show you what happens the rest of the day. Fingers crossed we get home in, within the day. Then we're going to cut back here for cheers to the good times. And if we're in an airport hotel, something's gone wrong. So uh, have a look at this. Obviously made it, and as we say, in postcard fight. Cheers to the good times. A mate of mine is a bit thick. He went on a cruise ship holiday and he started to learn Spanish. How did he get on? He got lost at sea. <laughs> <laughs>